Hi, I'm Zach Wisner Gross, and now we're going to talk about the rule of succession. All right, I'm going to open with a question. So let's say I have a weighted coin, but I don't know what the likelihoods are for getting heads or tails. And now I've flipped the coin 10 times, and every time I get heads. What's the probability of getting heads on the 11th try? Well, if it were a fair coin, it would be a half heads and half tails, but uh, since I got heads 10 times in a row, it's probably not a fair coin. All right, before we attack that problem, let's work on something simpler first. So say I have four boxes, and inside each box I have nine circles. And each circle is either colored red or yellow. What's the probability if I pick a box at random and then a circle at random of getting a yellow circle? Well, that's just the total number of yellow circles over the total number of circles, or in this case, 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 over 4 times 9, which is just 19 over 36. So with Bayesian probability, what you do is you kind of flip the problem around. So before I said that we're picking a box at random and a circle at random, what's the probability that it's yellow? Now I'm saying, let's assume that I already picked a yellow circle. Which box did I pick it from? Well, originally the probability for each box was just a quarter. But now that I know I picked a yellow circle, these probabilities have changed. In this case, it's most likely that I picked the yellow circle from the top left box, since it had the most yellow circles. So the probability for each box is the number of yellow circles from that box over the total number of yellow circles. So for the top left box, it's 9 19 and then 4 19 1 19 5 19 for the other boxes. And notice that all these probabilities add up to 1, as you'd expect. All right, let's return to flipping coins. Now, suppose that the probability of getting a heads is x, and the probability of getting tails is then 1 minus x. So if I toss the coin, n times, what's the probability of getting exactly a heads? Well, this is just a binomial probability. The x to the a term comes from getting heads a times, each with an independent probability x. And then 1 minus x to the n minus a is getting the n minus a tails. And the coefficient n choose a comes from the different arrangements I could have of when I get heads and when I get tails out of the n tosses. And as a brief reminder, for those of you whose combinatorics is a little rusty, n choose a is just equal to n factorial over a factorial and minus a factorial. All right, so remember we did the, the, the Bayesian probability where we flip the problem with the yellow circles around. We're going to do the same thing here with the coin. So if I flip a coin, n times and get a heads. This is now your given information. Before we said, suppose the weight is x, what's the probability of getting a heads on n tosses? Now I'm saying we flip the coin n times and we get exactly a heads. Now I'm asking, what's the probability for the different weightings? What is the probability distribution for x? So for each weighting x, recall that the probability of getting a heads on n flips was this expression, n choose a, x to the a, 1 minus x to the n minus a. Now here's the, the key leap in logic in this presentation. And the key here is, is understanding that the likelihood of the coin having a particular weighting should be proportional to how often that weighting produces a heads on n flips. So p of x is proportional to our older expression for p of a. And you could take some time to, to think about that. This is really the key here. It's, it's, it's exactly uh, analogous to our previous discussion of the probability for the, each box being proportional to the number of yellow circles in that box. But this is just a proportionality. If we want to get an equation out of that, we have to normalize. So we have to divide this expression uh, by the sum or integral of all the different probabilities for the different weightings so that the sum or integral of all the probabilities comes out to be 1. So this is exactly what I discussed. We're taking the probability from the previous section, the previous slide, and dividing it by the integral over all the different possible weightings. So we're integrating x from 0 to 1 in this case. And we can cancel out the n choose a coefficient for a slightly simpler expression. All right, well, this integral is pretty messy. But uh, fortunately, this has already been solved for us. This is uh, Euler's beta function. So it happens that the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the a times 1 minus x to the n minus a integrated over x. OK, so here's our general expression now for p of x. The coefficient is from that normalization. And we still have our x to the a, 1 minus x to the n minus a. 
Well, here's a slightly simpler way of writing it. And now let's ask the question, what does this result look like? How does p of x change with successive coin flips? And just remember, x is the specific weighting. x is the probability of getting heads on a single toss. Okay, so after zero flips, we have no information, so let's just assume that it's a uniform distribution. The weighting could be anything. It could be always tails at zero, it could be always heads at one, it could be half and half at 0.5. We have no information about what p of x is. Okay, let's suppose we, get, we do one coin flip, as indicated in the top left, and let's say it's a heads. Well, now it's more likely than not that the coin is weighted toward heads. And here's after two flips, it becomes even more likely that it's weighted toward heads. Most of the area under this probability distribution is over toward the right side. And three heads, and we can continue on uh, for successive flips. So that's 10 flips in a row. And now all of a sudden if we have a tails, it's impossible for x to be equal exactly to 1, otherwise we would never get a tails. Uh, so the most likely uh, scenario in this case is that the weighting is about 0.9. All right, we have enough information now to derive the rule of succession. If I flip a coin n times and I get exactly a heads, what's the probability of getting heads? Now we call weight x here, right? x is the probability of getting heads on a specific toss, so d weight is just dx, and the probability of the weight is p of x. And the probability of getting heads, given a weight, is just x. That's what x is. So we're integrating from 0 to 1 x times p of x. Now p of x we can write by this reasonably complex expression. And we multiply that expression by x. You'll note that we have a, an a plus 1 as our exponent of the x term. All right, but this looks pretty familiar. This looks like Euler's beta function again. So if we treat this like Euler's beta function, we now get the expression for the integral a plus 1 factorial n minus a factorial over n plus 2 factorial. So we can replace this integral in our expression. And we can simplify a little bit. And finally, we can do some cancellations. Which gives us the remarkably simple expression at the end, a plus 1 over n plus 2. So if I flip a coin n times and get exactly a heads, the probability of getting another heads on that, on that n plus 1 toss is a plus 1 over n plus 2. So if I have that weighted coin and I don't know what the, uh, the likelihoods are for getting heads or tails, this is the first slide I showed you, if I flip the coin 10 times and I get heads every time, what's the probability of getting heads on the 11th try? Well, that's a plus 1 over n plus 2. n is the number of tosses, that's 10. a is the number of times I got that event, heads in this case, so that's also 10. So it's 10 plus 1 over 10 plus 2, 11 twelfths. All right. One bonus problem here. This is a, a, a philosophical question. What's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow? Well, in this case, the total number of events or, or days or risings of the sun or, or over a 24-hour period uh, in the past uh, is 1.8 times 10 to the 12 days. That's the number of events. And as far as we know, the sun has risen every single day. So again, A in this case, the number of uh, uh, positive events like flipping a coin and getting heads, is 1.8 times 10 to the 12 as well. So in this case, a plus 1 over n plus 2 is 1.8 times 10 to the 12 plus 1 over 1.8 times 10 to the 12 plus 2, which if you tell expand is approximately 1 minus 1 over 1.8 times 10 to the 12, which is 99.999, uh, 99.10 more nines and then 44%. So it's incredibly likely that the sun will rise tomorrow. But take that result with a grain of salt. This is a mathematical derivation of that.